Welcome, this is the Algebra 1 end of course practice test number 3, question number 55. The question says, which graph best represents the system of inequalities below? I'm going to scout this problem out a little bit before I start typing everything in, just to see if I can eliminate any answers. In the EOCs in general, usually not, but occasionally you can. So I'm going to look at the inequalities. I have one that has a line under it, which would indicate that it's a solid line. I have one that has no line under it, which would indicate that it's just a less than greater than situation. So there's that's a dotted line, and it makes that's the sort of the edge of the answer, uh, the boundary. So it's not actually part of the solution set. I'm going to look to see if any of them have a mix of don't have a mix, but they all tend to have a mix, and they do. You'll notice they also look exactly alike, pretty much, except for a few things. Um, for instance, in A, C, A and C, you'll notice that your descending line would be your dotted line, whereas in B and D, your descending line, your negative slope, is uh, a solid line. So that could be helpful. What I'm going to do now is convert everything into slope-intercept form. After very quickly, I just look at whether I'm going to flip the uh, sign over, the inequality over. If in your standard form, which is what this is, because x and y are on the same side, if it's negative, it means you're going to end up flipping this over. But in this case, it's not. So no matter what, I know that this is going to be a greater than statement. So I should look for ones where my solid line is actually being uh, shaded up. So if I have one where, so this would be a solid line shade. That works. See how this one, the solid line would actually be shaded down? I can go ahead and eliminate that answer. It's not going to be A. Uh, in the other, s and I'm going to do it for the rest of them as well. In the solid line here, no. In the solid line here, it's up. So it's either going to be C or D. Those are my only choices. For my dotted line, I know that it's not going to flip. So my Y is going to be less than. So I'm looking for a dotted line shading down. And both of them have it. So it could still be C or D. Now I'm going to do my conversion. So X plus Y, negative X, is greater than or equal to 2. I need to add X to both sides. So these cancel. Y is greater than or equal to X plus 2. My goal was to get it in slope-intercept form. Now I know that my solid line should have a positive slope. Well, in this case, my solid line has a negative slope. Here, my solid line has a positive slope. So really, that's the only answer that it could be. So I know the answer before I even graphed it to number 55 is C, just by scouting the problem and doing one little minor adjustment. Adding X to both sides is a very simple solution here. I'll continue it on forward, but we're done, really. So scout the problem ahead, and a lot of times you can, if you're the type of person who forgets a negative or something or doesn't like to write all the steps out and you tend to forget to flip or whatever it happens to be, whatever your issue is, I don't know, um, you can still sort of get the correct answer. Divided by 3 on both sides. You don't need to flip it over, like I said earlier, negative 2 thirds x. Now, we already know what the answer is. I mean, obviously at this point, and I don't know why I made an equal sign as opposed to a less than sign. That's what I meant to write. Because I was just not thinking about it, I guess. So now I can graph them. And it'll make the pretty graph. And, you know, I'm hopeful anyway. So I go in and turn it on. Go to y equals. And I want to type in x plus 2, at least on this calculator. X plus 2, and it's a greater than, so I'm going to go over to the right where the little windshield wiper thing is and hit enter <clears throat> a couple times, and you see how it's sort of like, uh, I always called it the top half of the sandwich. That means it's a greater than situation. I know it's greater than, by the way, because Y is next to the big end of the inequality. That's all you have to do to know. On the other side of it, down below, Y is next to the little end, so that would mean it's less than. So I'm going to click enter, I think, three times gives me that bottom half of a sandwich. It looks like a less than even. And then I'm going to type in uh, negative. For me, I always tend to put, you could put parentheses 2 divided by 3 if you like, depending on your calculator. If I can put in a, a fraction and it is a fraction, I'm always going to do that. Uh, just because it tends to match up exactly visually, and that makes it easy to tell if it's right. So then I graph it. And remember, whatever one you pushed in first should be the one it graphs. So the one going up should be a solid line, just as we predicted. So of course the answer is C. My point about the solid line thing is sometimes the only difference between two graphs will be which one is solid and which one is dotted. Like occasionally, you'll even get one that has it graphed over here. 
And really the only difference between these two now is that the one going up is the solid line. When you graph in a calculator, it usually won't do both unless you have an app on there that will allow you to do it. And I don't know the legality of whether you could put that kind of app on your calculator before you take a statewide exam. But uh, whichever one you typed in first is the one that graphs first. So I used to put my finger like right on the... Uh, the graph that comes out first to remind myself that okay it's supposed to be a solid line so I would still know to pick this one even if it was shaded in over here it's not it's really not that difficult you can get the answer without graphing it but there's all the forms that I can think of so good luck